I'm Meg Lemire, and I'm really excited to share my art here with you at Darlington Art Center. It's hanging up for a few months, and I'd love to show you a few of my pieces and how I've made them. In this hallway, I have a series of comics that I created called Things I Learned from My Cat in Quarantine. And this was created in the first few months of the pandemic this year in 2020, because we were all buckled in I had lost all of my work in the beginning of the pandemic and I needed something to do to make me happy. And I live with my cat, Meowzapan, who is very delightful and we spend um, a strange amount of time together. <laughs> and not to be too cat ladylike, but I decided to draw an entire series of things that we do together around the house and little lessons that she teaches me. And I started sharing these comics on Instagram and realized that we all need a little level levity in our lives right now um, because things are really intense and we all need to remember and hold on to those things that bring us a lot of just pure joy. So this is my series of things I learned from my cat in quarantine. This is a piece that's called Cupid. As you can see, it's a flying squirrel shooting an arrow with a heart on it off into the distance while it's shooting out from the trees below. And it's framed within this frame of designs that I thought was pretty. I wanted to celebrate, I drew it around Valentine's Day and I wanted to celebrate um, things that bring people together. And in the year prior to creating this, I had spent a lot of time out in central Pennsylvania um, in working in nature and staying amongst the trees. And there were a lot of flying squirrels. And a couple of my friends kind of fell in love while they were out there. Uh, and there were all, this little family of flying squirrels that were there were around all of us during that whole time and I thought it was a really sweet story. So I kind of celebrated um, Cupid as a flying squirrel and also I wanted to hearken back to Saint Valentine and so I put the little moon behind her in order to have it be more of like an iconographic piece. Hi! This is a piece called, I know the wind is strong, but sorry -o. I drew this piece one night when I was having a really rough day. This was a number of years ago, and I needed a little, a little pick-me-up while I was trying to figure out how to move forward from this really difficult time. So I drew this, and without thinking about it, I, really, I just shared it on my Instagram page, and a lot of people were like, wow, I really needed this right now, like things are really tough. And over the past year, 2020 has given us so many opportunities to build each other up because things are really hard right now. And so a lot of people have been really resonating with this piece as we are really working against a strong, strong force that's, that's moving through us and past us and the determination of people who are willing to fight through that and willing to go step by step like this little fennec fox is going step by step against this very strong wind and is willing to work through the really hard stuff to get to the other side and succeed. This piece was drawn in April and May of this year in 2020, but I started drawing it a long time ago. It was many years ago when I was reading the book Khalil Gibran's The Prophet. And I was illustrating just in my sketchbook the poems and the chapters as I was going through it. And the piece that I drew or just sketched out quickly for um, the poem called On Self-Knowledge really spoke to me. And I drew that and I held on to it in my sketchbook for years. And this year I was looking through my sketchbooks thinking of different different new personal pieces that I could create and came across that piece and decided to reimagine it and redraw it. So I took all of the different elements within the piece and reimagined them and redesigned them within this Art Nouveau design. 
it was really fun process for me because I was able to um, create a piece that didn't specifically have um, a set communication because as an illustrator I do storytelling and I communicate constantly through my artwork but with this piece although it was derived originally from a poem that was very specific and I'm super inspired by I was able to create a really personal aspect of it um, that really was just about my my take on that poem and so I'll tell you a little bit about my process and how I create illustrations and pieces like this in general. So in the beginning when I'm creating a piece like this, I sketch it out very small on a piece of paper just to try to get the overall feel of what the composition is going to look, at, look like in the end. And then once I get the basic understanding of what it will look like, I'm able to blow it up and draw it full size on a large piece of paper or in this case illustration board and I draw it all out in pencil and then in order to get the ink on it the black ink outlines I erase the entire thing so that only very faint outlines are shown and then I take my pen and my inks and I draw every single line very precisely. When I'm able to send this to the printer, it's very exciting to get it back because I've worked so hard to get the colors just right. But when I got the prints back from my printer, they looked really saturated and I wasn't sure what was going on. So luckily I have a really long standing relationship with my printer and they were able to go back in and decrease the saturation about 15% and shoot out these really beautiful prints. The printing process is offset printing. The offset printing process is really cool because you're able to have a whole lot of control over how the printing goes and what kind of colors you're gonna end up with in the final print. So it basically happens that there are four to six different huge rollers that might take up this whole room and these rollers churn out cyan, yellow, magenta, and black. And if you know the color combination CMYK that sometimes our computers print with, that's what those C is for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And they have plates that go around each one that help the percentage of the color be uh, put onto the paper as it's rolled through. And so we're specifically able to say, okay, I want 15% less magenta, which is what makes it more saturated. And we're able to take that down and roll it out and get such beautiful colors in the end. This piece is done in pen and ink with digital color on top. And I really liked that process because I love drawing in ink. I can't draw in ink super super well when it's just straight ink to paper so I always start with this sketch pencil first and then I reduce the pencil so that it's very very barely visible and then I ink on top and I love this process because it's able to give me a really much more control over my process than I would be able to in a lot of other circumstances and I'm able to celebrate the variation and the movement and the shapes of the world around us in such a great way. And, it, and I have to be really precise. I can't leave anything up to chance. So everything is very calculated, everything is planned, and I already know what I'm going to be doing next before I do the first thing. So it's always a very planned process and it's been really fun to be able to figure out how to how to create images using pen and ink, but explore so many different objects and animals and life all around us with this process.